Hello and welcome to Politics Today. In this programme, we'll be asking, is there an end in sight regarding COVID-19 as the government announces even more stricter measures to try and defeat the crisis? So what is our response as Christians to this global pandemic? In this programme today, I'll be joined by Olive Snelling, from uh, Christian Broadcasting Council, as well as Alastair Scott, who's the UK Director of the European Coalition for Israel. So welcome to the programme. So pleased uh, you can join us. Um, and it's great to see you back in our studio, Olive, uh, after such a long time. It's so, lovely to uh, be here. It, can you just describe, because you live in London, um, how it's been like for you um, dealing with this COVID-19 crisis? Well, it may be unusual, what I'm going to say, but um, in this time, uh, my husband has been uh, operated upon for a, for, a, for a hip replacement. And so we were isolated two weeks before that. And then I was in lockdown before that, because not because I am ancient, but I am fairly ancient, but because of the combination of drugs that I take. So I was in shielding. Um, and since my husband came out of hospital, um, he is in, in self-isolation, I am shielding. So for, for absolutely ages, <laughs> I have been kind of on my, uh, well, not on my own entirely, but with my beloved husband. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you something. I have been absolutely filled with the joy of the Lord. Mm. I have been absolutely <laughs> thrilled every day to, you know, to speak to the Lord, to read his word, to, to soak myself in his word. And it, it hasn't been awful at all, but I know that it has been absolutely dreadful for lots of people. And there are lots yeah. of, uh, of, of stories of, uh, of people dying without any of their loved ones being able to even say goodbye. You know, <laughs> there's a full spectrum, you know, from me saying I'm rejoicing in the joy of the Lord, not because of the, because of the situation, but just because of the Lord in the midst of this turmoil. And on the other hand, people dying, you know, in, in incredible circumstances, difficult circumstances. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been, you know, it's kind of everything in between. But I think that it is a time of taking the Lord very, very seriously mm, indeed. Ab absolutely. Uh, and Alistair, I mean, you, you wear so many, so many hats. <laughs> I, d I don't know what to describe what you do. I mean, you, you firstly, the UK director of the European Coalition for Israel, uh, which I know very well, so I work with Thomas on the European report, mm -hmm. uh, which is being put on hold for now. And um, also the other, uh, Joseph Storehouse yes. as well. So um, how, how are Christian ministries coping in the light of this crisis with no with no travel, no ability to actually organise conferences, uh, which are very, very important, and regional gatherings, um, having to rely on Zoom technology. Uh, how are you making headway? Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's very challenging times. But in the midst of it, like, like Olive has just said, God is in control. And rather than look to blame anything else, you just adapt to the circumstances. And I think for all of us, we've become very much aware of the technology and we are still thriving. I know we can't, can't have our meetings like we were having monthly and, and conferences just now. Sukkot, we'd have had a Sukkot conference in, in Israel and we'd have had a London Feast of Tabernacles coming up in a couple of weeks' time. And they've all had to be cancelled. But we, we are still... I'm amazed. We, we just had a, a meeting, an online meeting with our, our board yesterday and we were looking at the financial report and the giving has gone up. The donations have gone up. Uh, again, I think it's because it's an Israel-based ministry, uh, because I'm, I know of many churches who are really struggling financially. But, but in the midst of everything that's going on, people are understanding that uh, we need to look after our Jewish people first. You know, look out for Israel, bless them, and you re receive the blessing back. So we were very encouraged to see, despite the fact we can't have conferences, we can't have our monthly outreach meetings, we're using Zoom very regularly with prayer meetings. Have been amazing. Uh, incredible how strong and how far reaching it is. You're not limited by, uh, you know, a region. We've got people linking up for European Coalition for Israel right across every, every continent that's covered by intercessors. It's just been an amazing time uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout this lockdown. So 
we haven't struggled. Yes, we struggle in, in not having to face to face fellowship. But uh, as Olive said, the, the, the presence of God, the joy of the Lord, when you know that God is in control, that's the big thing is he, he is allowing things to happen in order to bring us closer to him, increase our level of faith. So it's an exciting time as well as a terrible time to, to hear the, the negative side of things like Olive has already explained, people are dying and we know that. And there are lots of conspiracy uh, theories going around too. We know that too. But when you have the Holy Spirit, that's the important thing because the Holy Spirit knows everything and he will tell you what you need to know. And gives you peace as well. Uh, the pulse is all understanding. Yeah. Well, as of today's recording, I'm just going to read out some of these headlines because some of these headlines are quite damning. Here we go. Millions more face toughest uh, COVID uh, curbs. Then we got to this one uh, with the Daily Mail, which says, back to the bad old days. Uh, there we go. So as I was uh, recording, the, our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, announced a new three-tier system to actually uh, create uh, further lockdowns in regional areas. And uh, this is our Prime Minister giving what was his press conference yesterday at 10 Downing Street. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm, I'm glad that we have uh, the Chancellor Rishi Sunak uh, with us and our Chief Medical Officer Chris Whitty. We're entering a new and crucial phase in a fight against coronavirus because the number of cases has gone up four times in four weeks and it's once again spreading among the elderly and vulnerable. There are already more COVID patients in UK hospitals today than there were on the 23rd of March when the whole country went into lockdown and deaths, alas, are also rising once again. These figures are flashing at us like dashboard warnings in a passenger jet and we must act now. So we're giving local authorities across England around a billion pounds so they can protect vital services as they fight the virus. Nightingale hospitals across the north of England are being prepared for service. And so we can squash this virus wherever it appears, we are today simplifying, standardising and in some places toughening local rules in England by introducing three levels of COVID alert. Medium, with uh, existing national measures such as the rule of six and the closure of hospitality at 10 p.m., High, with extra measures, including a ban on indoor social mixing between households or support bubbles. And very high for places where, without further action, the NHS will swiftly be under intolerable pressure. Areas within the very high alert category will be reviewed every four weeks and nowhere will be shut down indefinitely. And the exact restrictions at this level, very high, will be worked out with local leaders along with tailored packages of support. But at a minimum, at a minimum, they will sadly include a ban on all social mixing between households in private places, including gardens, and pubs and bars must close unless they can operate solely as a restaurant serving alcohol only as part of a main meal. We will also ask people not to travel into and out of very high alert level areas. No one affected by this will be left to fend for themselves and we're going to expand our unprecedented economic support to assist those affected by these decisions, extending our job support scheme to cover two thirds of the wages of those in any business that is required to close and providing those businesses with a cash grant of up to £3,000 a month instead of £1,500 every three weeks. And extra funding too for those in the very high category for local test and trace and enforcement. You will shortly be able to type in your postcode to gov.uk and see exactly what restrictions apply where you live. The majority of the country will for now be at medium. Most Areas currently under local intervention will be at high and Nottinghamshire, including Nottingham itself, East and West Cheshire and a small area of High Peak will also move to this level. Over the weekend, we've been working with local leaders 
in areas where the data are most worrying. And from Wednesday, local authorities in the Liverpool city region will move to the very high alert level. In addition to pubs and bars, we've agreed with Liverpool city mayor, Steve Rotherham, that gyms, leisure centres, betting shops, adult gaming centres and casinos will close. We're still working with other local leaders to determine how best to tackle the resurgence of the virus in their areas, but tackle it we will. No one wants to impose these kinds of, at least of all me, wants to impose these kinds of restrictions, uh, erosions of our personal liberty. But I'm as convinced as I've ever been that the British people have the resolve to beat this virus and that together we will do just that. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand over to the Chancellor, who's some more details on how we'll be supporting these businesses. And... Uh... And that was the, the latest announcement made by the Prime Minister to bring about uh, more and more restrictions in order to defeat uh, this uh, virus. I have to ask you, Olive, um, you've had a very active life. You've lived and worked in the States uh, covering kind of major news events. But have you ever known a time like this in your lifetime? Unprecedented. Mm. Never known. Never known anything like this. And the, the, the extraordinary thing is that it's, that it's global. Mm. And, and this, this, to me, this is a, a, another reason why it is very necessary to, to listen to the Lord and what is the Lord saying in all of this and what, why are we in this situation? Well, actually, we can't say why. But, you know, this, this is a time for serious, serious, serious attention. And eschatologically, incredibly significant. And I've never seen anything like it, ever. But we, we need to take serious serious notice mm. of everything that is happening. Absolutely. Uh, and Alistair, I just want to mm. uh, just read out some, some information here, for example. They're saying that a third of the UK population will now be living under stricter conditions uh, that will cover 22 million people. And they reckon that 9 million Londoners will soon be joining them within a matter of days. Um, and that the government's chief scientist, who's very famous by now, Professor mm -hmm. uh, Chris Whitty, does not believe that these new measures are tough enough. Um, now, this, this is kind of almost unprecedented, that a whole of our, our, our nations have gone into virtually another. We had a lockdown back in March and April. It looks like we're going into regional lockdowns, particularly with Liverpool uh, being hit the hardest and restrictions on our, on, on our liberty. Um, do you think the government is acting sensibly or, as we're seeing, there's a lot of dissent against this government, primarily because saying it's OK, yeah, I tackle COVID-19 as a crisis, but aren't you in danger of putting millions of people out of, out of work, uh, destroying the economy, um, not dealing with, with uh, cancer patients or those with heart disease? Mm. And so the casualties or the aftermath mm. of this crisis when it's finally over, and let's pray that it's over soon, um, could have a profound impact upon our nation and the nations of the world. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's, it's a, such a difficult job for any government and uh, our Prime Minister because they don't know. No one really knows. We have the World Health Organization and it gives its advice, but no one actually knows what is happening with this pandemic. And, and therefore, they are trying things and, and if it doesn't work, they have to re-address, uh, reassess and, and move on. So, yeah, from those figures, it's like 50% of our population is going to be back under lockdown and um, quite possibly it'll be, numbers will increase. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not just the governments that, that we need to look to. As, as Olive said earlier, the, amazing, the most important thing is actually for us as believers to be praying and asking God to lead us, guide us, direct our steps, do whatever we're able to do. But, but we were talking about this earlier. The, the problem is that people are not taking responsibility. It's very easy to point the finger at the government, but when, when you've got people who are just disregarding the regulations uh, because they feel, I'm, I'm going to be okay in this situation, it's, it's just not acting responsibly. And uh, there needs to be a whole change in the, the heart of the people. And again, I think that's, that's a, a, a something, a very important subject for us as believers and intercessors to be praying into the lives and the hearts of people being softened and turned to him. 
it is a great time of opportunity to sharing the gospel and, 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 and proclaiming the Lord's plans and, and realizing that God is a merciful God and, and he is able to protect, he's able to heal, he's able to do all those things that we believe in. Um, and, and having faith in what God's trying to teach us in the whole situation, and maybe it's not a popular word, but in the midst of it all, we have to remember everything in the Bible that talks about shakings, it's not, it's God that allows the shaking, and he does it because he loves and he wants people to turn back to him and call upon his name. So what an opportunity for us as believers and the churches and the ministries to actually get the focus back, fix your eyes on Jesus, uh, you know, get our focus back on the Lord and the Lord's plans and his plans like Jeremiah 29 verse 11. They're always not to harm us, but to prosper us, to give us a hope for the future. And how much do we need a hope for the future right now? Amen. Absolutely. Uh, and Olive, there, there was a shocking story that I think the vast majority of our viewers watching this program will be shocked. Uh, it says here that uh, Council Jobworth bans funeral mourners from saying the Lord's Prayer, claiming it is uh, chanting and that it breaks uh, government uh, COVID rules. It says here, uh, grieving funeral goers were banned from praying uh, at a service because they were told it could spread the coronavirus and the Lord's Prayer was not allowed to be said. Um, Surely this is taking things out of hand, isn't it? And, and what we're seeing is there are sinister forces at work who mm. hate Christianity, hate our Judeo-Christian heritage, and uh, using this crisis as a cover to attack Christians and to not allow mourners to actually pray at a funeral or, or to read the Lord's Prayer mm. in what is supposed to, need to be a Christian country it is absolutely shocking. What are your thoughts? Well... I, my thoughts very naturally mm -hmm. are that I think that something like that is completely and utterly absurd. And that, you know, the problem is that, that there are people acting idiotically mm -hmm. on, the, on, on the administrative side and, and people acting idiotically on the receiving end of it and not taking any notice of, uh, of, what, of what is going on. But I think that when you, can, when you ban the saying of the Lord's Prayer at a funeral, that's mm -hmm. going too far. Mm -hmm. I, re I remember hearing just quite recently, I think that it was the Bishop uh, of, of Chester, I can't, I can't remember exactly, but he was asked if, say, for example, one, uh, his mother or father or close relative were dying in a, in, a, in a home, would he accept that he couldn't actually go and say goodbye? And he cheerfully said, I would go and say goodbye. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just... The, the problem is that the lack of common sense, I mean, we talk about common sense because that's <coughs> supposed to be common to all of us in humanity. It's not. It's not widely used or widely expressed in that it just seems that some things are too much. Though, if they allowed the saying of the Lord's Prayer, then would that be exploited to, some, to something that, that was, could possibly lead to spreading the virus? Yeah. So, it, honestly, Honestly, Simon, I just think at this time, it's trying to follow what, how is the Lord mm. leading? What is he saying to us? Mm. When do we obey? Because we are supposed to obey the law mm. and, and, the, and those who are put in authority over us. That's what it mm. says in Timothy. Mm. It's just, you have to try to, to, you know, to pray as hard as you can and do as best you can under all of the circumstances, but it's probably not going to work 100% of the time. I mean, um, Alice, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're aware that only a few weeks ago we had something in the region of, stated about 100,000 uh, born-again Christians that uh, were at a rally. Uh, two major events took place in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, one was a, a prayer and repentance, and the other one was uh, praying for the nation and doing a prayer walk. Mm -hmm. Now, it's believed that there were about 300,000 American Christians who attended that uh, over that special weekend on, on the nation's capital yes. in the States. Uh, and yet, here we are, we have 300,000 American Christians mm. meeting together. A uh, few were wearing masks, no doubt. Not many of them were practicing social distancing, really calling uh, for repentance on, on behalf of America and repentance on behalf of the church and the role it's played. Um, and yet 
could you see something like this happen here outside uh, Westminster or 10 Downing Street where Christians got together and say, look, we need to pray for the nation. But what was different about this one, it was you can see this was endorsed by President Trump yeah. and Mike Pence also spoke as well. So it'd be the equivalent of someone in Boris Johnson's cabinet saying, OK, we'll give you this space. Would you pray for our nation? Would you pray for our government? Now, if our government turn away and don't want any prayers, uh, then really how can God step in and help our cabinet and our government over this crisis? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's one of the things that uh, I was talking a few months ago about the whole thing, when, when you had those earlier rallies around London where uh, they were well, tens of thousands certainly gathering together, protesting, and they were not social distancing <laughs> and protesting about everything and anything uh, to do with the ecosystems and so on. Uh, and just coming against, it was a lawless attitude, with the spirit of lawlessness. We know that that's being released at this time in which we live. And I said to some friends of mine, you know, I, I can remember taking a, a, a group of uh, our students out into London. We do this regularly just to go out and speak to people and give out tracts. And, and it's, it's practical experience for our students. Uh, and uh, I was saying, I remember being on one occasion, we were there in the weekend and we were around Westminster, we were around the uh, uh, House of Parliament, Parliament Square, Trafalgar Square, all these places, and there was a call by Christians to come and pray outside the, the House of Parliament. And, you know, we had a reasonable response, but, you know, it was something like 100 and 150 people, and we were kind of saying, hey, that's good, we've got 150 people. But that's not being proactive. Uh, you know, to think of what happened in America, okay, there are different people to us. But it was right outside the White House. Absolutely. It had the approval of the, of the leadership. How important is it for us to pray for leaders who fear the Lord? It's my constant prayer for this nation is, Lord, bring back, restore the fear of the Lord in our, in our government, in, even in our church, uh, and certainly amongst uh, the people, uh, because it would make such a difference. I believe in the power of prayer, and it's one of the things I, I would rally uh, Boris Johnson and his cabinet, and, and there are some believing parliamentarians there, we know that, rally them to, rather than try and close down prayer, increase prayer. Remember what happened in the Second World War, the king himself called the nation to prayer. Uh, and you know, the th thing that goes through my mind is the nations are trying everything they can do. The World Health Org uh, Organization are giving their advice, but nothing is really working. I mean, the latest thing I heard yesterday from, from Israel was that the World Health Organization are now saying isolation doesn't work. So what does that mean? Um, but what does work, and we know that, is prayer. Absolutely. And let's not close down prayer. Boris, if you see this, I'm, I'm imploring you, let us pray together more for our nation because it's what will make the difference when people, as the word says in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, if my people call by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. He promises to hear from heaven, forgive sin and heal the land. And we need healing in this land. We need healing in Europe. We need healing in all the five continents because of this situation that has come against us. And uh, Olive, we're down to the last five minutes of the program and, and I suppose the spirit of this age is a spirit of fear mm. um, that's been spread by a government. Our government is responding to fear, um, uh, which is making them make these scientific calculations in order to kind of defeat this virus. Um, but as believers, we shouldn't have a spirit of fear, should we? But we no. should have a, you know, a sound mind mm. uh, and have a peace in the Lord that, that passes all understanding. Mm. Um, as a, an experienced prayer warrior, uh, what advice have you got for our viewers that are feeling fearful over COVID-19? If you look at all of the instances in the Word of God where the words fear not, mm. literally, in, in, time after time after time, and right at the, the uh, birth of Jesus, fear not, for I have brought you tidings of great joy. We are told in the Word of God, we have not been given a spirit of fear. Amen. You, you, you commented on that. But of power and of love and of a sound oh, mind. Amen. Come on, guys. This is, this is, a, this is a place where, where, we, where we push fear away because fear comes from the enemy. And he wants us to kowtow to him and to his ways and his means of intimidation. Amen. And we won't have it. 
and we will rise up and pray, mm. and we will carry on, and we will go on until the Lord, well, he's not going to tell us to stop until he mm. comes again. But I mean, the fact is, one of the interesting things about this time is the use of Zoom, you were mentioning yes. that. Yes. Uh, I have been involved in the most fantastic times of prayer. Absolutely. Some of the, most, the, the best times of prayer that, that, that we've had. I agree. Um, and we pray for the media regularly every month. Um, and this is what, what we are absolutely called to do. And we are told to overcome in the name of Jesus. And that we not, love not our lives unto the death. If people are cowed by, by, by a government, they should be a lot more cowed by what the enemy is doing. Mm. And uh, Alistair, in about two and a half minutes, how, how should our viewers really respond to, as we mentioned, this, not only the spirit of fear, but a spirit, uh, a fear of man rather than the fear of God? And you mentioned that earlier, that it's important to have a perspective that God is sovereign, um, that he's in control of world events, and mm. we don't necessarily know what's going on or what's happening or what his purposes are in all this, but God does. Mm. So uh, isn't this a question of fearing him mm. rather than fearing yes. man and fearing what the government is doing because I, my heart does go out for the people of Liverpool who are under a virtual lockdown now uh, with, 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 with COVID-19 and it, mm. it's, it's nasty to have your own freedoms curtailed uh, in this way to defeat a virus. Absolutely. I mean, I think we've got the, the ideal, the, the, the examples are there in the Bible for us. Jesus totally submitted to the Father's will. I only do what I, I hear my, see my Father do, and I only speak what I hear my Father speak. And then you see the, old, uh, the, the book of Acts. Uh, there's a higher authority that we need to realize. We are meant to, Romans 13 is very clear, we're meant to submit to those in authority, but the highest authority is the Lord himself. And if Jesus showed us the example of it, and the book of Acts, didn't they say when, when, when the religious people took them in and the authorities took them in and said, you cannot do the works you're doing in the name of Jesus. Uh, and they said, it is better for us to obey God than to obey man. And I think that's really the ideal thing for us as believers is actually realize uh, if, if the Bible is telling us to meet together and pray, yes, we, we can be wise and do things sensibly. But if if, if the, the authorities of the land are trying to stop us from praying, I think there's a higher authority that's telling us to go ahead and do it. Amen. So I know in our church, we are being very, very clever and doing things without being uh, coming against anything, but we are organizing prayer meetings all the time. Alistair, Olive, uh, thank you so much for being my guests on Politics Day. Pleasure to have you both on the programme. And I uh, want to thank you for watching today's programme. Uh, there can be no doubt that we are facing the most unprecedented of times with this COVID-19 pandemic. But let's uh, look up and uh, realize that our redemption draws near. Let's rely on him. Let's not have fear in our hearts, but let's have peace in our hearts that comes from God. So I wanna thank you for watching Politics Today.